Welcome to The Real News Network. We're in Chicago at the People's Summit, and now we're going to talk to someone who, to a large extent, became an activist out of the Black Lives Matter movement and then moved uh, into campaigning for Bernie Sanders, Kendrick Sampson. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Kendrick is an actor, best known for his appearances on The Vampire Diaries and How to Get Away with Murder. And as I said, he's been out in the hustings with the Sanders campaign. So last time I interviewed you, the Sanders campaign was still hoping for a California miracle, and you were out you know, day, almost every day out campaigning, and uh, you think you were going even door to door and things. Uh, so how do you feel about where things are at? I mean, I'm still one of the the dreamers, I, I, I guess I would say. You know, I'm always an optimist. I'm like, anything can happen, you know. We're still still waiting for it. Unfortunately, there's like two, two, over two million uncounted ballots. So I'm like, we're still hoping for a California miracle. Um, you know, there's a road up to the convention, uh, if, if anything, to influence the platform um, and make it the most progressive platform that we've ever had, uh, the Democratic Party or the National the Republican uh, has ever had. So, and we want to push that agenda um, no matter what happens. If there is any path for him to become president, of course, then you would have an amazing progressive uh, agenda. If not, then we need to influence the DNC as much as possible and push them to represent our interest and the in interest of the many, the, the, the disenfranchised and the marginalized. I mean, there's, there's going to be a fight about that at the convention. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, it could be even a lot of Clinton delegates um, even will support some of the Sanders policy objectives. Um, but when all is said and done, without something, you know, hard to imagine happens, um, Hillary's going to be the nominee and she'll probably run whatever campaign she pleases. Um, so what, what do you do next in terms of the development of this movement? At this conference, a lot of emphasis on keeping this movement going, especially focusing on down ticket races. But on the other hand, there's going to be a lot of pressure to defeat Trump. It's somehow going to mean a vote for Clinton. And a lot of people here are saying they don't want to vote for Clinton under any circumstance. What's your feeling about that? I mean, a lot of people, he brought a lot of people in, Bernie brought a lot of people in who would not ever vote, um, period. So it's not really like they're going to be missing out on, on those votes. It's just that these people really believed in something. They really had a passion about something. A lot of them are activists um, who lost faith in the system a long time ago and were reintroduced into it. And now we have uh, united under this umbrella of the Bernie campaign, this progressive movement, um, and seen that we, could in, we can influence politics, that we can influence policy. And so we've, the movement is and has always been about inspiring people to get involved. Um, right now he's moved, uh, he created a portion of his website or dedicated a portion of his website, I think it's berniesanders.com slash win, to educating people uh, to run for office, how to run, run for office, uh, local offices, school boards and things like that. Um, so I think at all levels, from Congress, state all legislature, levels, Congress, to, um, all on down to very small offices, and how to be, you know, there are other, uh, I think, uh, workshops here and um, organizations that teach you how to be a community organizer and and how to influence politics, and that's what the movement is about: is is um, creating a world of equality for all uh, that starts from the people and then moves up, not from the top down. It, it's not a change that comes from the president, it, it's a change that comes from the people. The, uh, one of the things that's being debated over the weekend, out in the hallways, not so much on the panels, is, is this idea is it, how much effort should be put into trying to change or reform the Democratic Party. And is it reformable? I mean, the, the leadership, the machine, it's kind of controlled by a section of the billionaires that Bernie has been uh, attacking. Uh, how, what, what's your take on that? The way I see it, um, whether we actually had a discussion about it last night, uh, a, a bunch of activists, whether you stand for it or not, whether you are willing to reform the DNC or not, whether you are not going to vote um, and want to 
uh, have some act of civil disobedience to make a statement to the DNC. Um, ultimately, what it does is influence the platform because they see these people, they see that they do not want to vote for Hillary um, and that they are against the DNC and they want to, want to bring them in. Uh, so ultimately, I think it, it's beneficial either way. I think if, if the objective is to make enough noise that they hear us and change their agenda to reflect the policies that we want to see instated, um, anti-fracking policies and a car, a tax on carbon emissions and um, criminal justice reform and demilitarizing the police and those types of things, um, a $15 minimum wage, if we can influence the platform to, to pick those, those progressive ideals up and um, champion those policies, championing those policies, then it would be amazing. And, and we would have to hold them accountable. That would be the most important thing. And everybody who uh, would vote for that platform or would not will hold them accountable. So I think it's positive either way. And what about yourself in terms of your own activism? This call to run or to fight for people who are running, is that something you're going to get involved with? Yeah. Yeah. I. I I plan to find as many, you know, what we call Bernie Kratz, you know, progressive uh, politicians um, as possible and help them uh, in any way that I can without obviously spreading myself so thin that my help does not count. Uh, but make sure that I do my best to get involved in some of these programs that educate people how to run for office, on how to run for office and, um, uh, be the anti-voter suppression movement and uh, continue, continue with, of course, Black Lives Matter and ally with, you know, things like Josh Fox's movement of anti-fracking and making the uh, Native American reservations better, uh, the conditions uh, on those reservations better and, um, you know, equality for all, immigration reform, making sure that I'm partnering with these people uh, and a big thing of mine has always been to fight negative stereotypes for um, uh, Islamic people, black people, Latino people, Asian American, you know, all walks of life, especially Native Americans. And, um, and I, I plan on continuing that regardless of what happens with the movement. I was doing it before and I will continue doing it. One of the questions that's been raised that people were talking to at the conference is that there's been very little about foreign policy. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard spoke about it, but, but really almost the, the only plenary speaker, and there wasn't much, there's I think one panel. Uh, what, what do you think of that? I think, uh, and I'll probably butcher it, I can't remember who said it, it may, may have been Sean or somebody was saying that, you know, the most important thing is that we, I believe that we get money out of politics so that our views are reflected and that's a domestic thing. Um, I think that is most important so that when we do protest something like, you know, the Iraq war, it doesn't happen. You know, that our voices are, are, are heard. You know, this, the, this regime change uh, in Syria is a serious issue. You know, the no flight zone that have, has been proposed it can be very detrimental by to Clinton, the security yeah. of, by Clinton, ha, could be detrimental to the security of America. Um, and we don't want I, I to, we're already spread too thin, um, involved in too many wars, and especially black and brown people are the first people to go to join the military and to be on the front lines and to die. Uh, I don't want to see more of my brothers and sisters, no matter what color race um, they are, I don't want to see them dying. I don't, you know. So I think that is most important. And then I, you know, I'm in strong support of her of her um, petition to to stop the regime change, stop the U.S. involvement of the regime change in Syria. And just finally, when when it when it got, gets to push and shove, you have to make a decision. Where are you at? Some people here are saying they just don't want to vote for Clinton under any circumstances. Others are saying, well, you vote for Clinton, then you keep building the movement, but you do have to resoundingly defeat Trump. And that, 
they say you can't do without voting for Clinton. Where, are you, where do you come down? Right now, according to the DNC rules, neither one of them has secured the, the nomination. So I'm still in strong support of Bernie, whether he's going to be the uh, nominee or not. I, I support what he's doing. I mean, his plan to tour around this country and get people involved in local politics, I'm 100% I'm involved in that and, and dedicated to doing those things. Um, when, it, when, I, when we get to the general election, I will make my decision uh, based on what I, whether I've been convinced um, or if there's another viable option. Whatever it is, I, you know, we have months and months, and as we've seen every single day, it, there's a radical change in this, this, uh, this um, campaign season. So I have no idea what's going to happen before November. Um, but for right now, I'm dedicated to the lives of the disenfranchised and marginalized in this country, and I'm continuing my movement with Bernie Sanders. All right, that's great. Thanks very much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.